Hey, you know that Emperor of Mankind guy? Pretty important. So these are a bunch of different fun theories that I found on the internet and going through old forum posts and whatnot. Each of these on their own wouldn't make for a full length video, so I'm just going to be throwing all of these together. At the end, I'm going to have two things of the lore that I just don't understand and hopefully you guys can correct me on. Keep in mind before we get started, a lot of these are from well over a decade ago, so if they seem outlandish, it's because the current foundations in 40k just didn't exist at the time. Starting us off with the smooth brain theories, we have Trezin and the Emperor are playing a multi-millennia spanning game of British Museum. They both collect artifacts no matter the cost, no matter the history. They both have relics or beings of unimaginable power trapped like Pokemon. This theory, it kind of reminds me of the SCP universe where the various leaders of the faction swap places and try to quote unquote win. And every cycle the leaders would change place and it would just be a never ending game. Kind of like the great game that the Chaos Gods have. Number two, the Emperor is an old one. I... Uh, I like this one, it would explain a lot. Again, no evidence. Number three, we've got the Emperor is a dark age of technology creation. Uh, this one, I'm pretty sure, goes back to Awama Candlewire uh, when she was being executed for uh, stealing water and her son Ra Endymion was taken by Constantine Valdor. I absolutely love this theory and I'm about to go full smooth brain. Imagine if the Emperor was the first quote unquote prototype superhuman. The Emperor, upon realizing just how much power he actually had through some means either caused the cybernetic uprising or his birth sparked a civil war since a solid percentage of humanity would be against the idea of creating the perfect human. And before I get any comments saying that the Emperor wouldn't know about ancient history, he is more than capable of either downloading or delving into the archaeological records of the Human Federation. They had at least 20,000 years of building and mining Earth. They would have certainly either used super advanced LIDAR, which is just ground penetrating radar, or have surveyed the entirety of the planet. Big E would be more than capable of taking in all the knowledge of human history and planning an intricate story that lines up with whatever histories survived the Age of Strife. This theory also goes a long way to explaining why the Emperor makes so many dumb decisions. He has the knowledge of all of human history, but he doesn't have the first-hand experience or the wisdom to go along with it. Moving on to number four, we all know the theory that a group of shamans sacrificed themselves to birth the Emperor, but I'm going to give another side of that. What if the shaman story was a metaphor for a group of scientists who would have worked together in a desperate Hail Mary to create a, a being capable of beating the machine? The basis of this was that the entirety of humankind would have some level of cybernetics or augmetics, and humanity had to have something capable of countering that. And the Human Federation's last desperate plan was to pour all of their resources into a psychic weapon instead of a mechanical or synthetic weapon. I'm gonna be honest, this one is up there is one of the least likely. Number five, we have the Emperor is the last of the human gods. Humanity at one point had many gods through the same means that the Eldari do, and that the Emperor is doing everything he can to either ensure that he is the only deity left, or the exact opposite and he is doing everything he can to strengthen the faith in humanity so he has the strength to restore the Pantheon. That's the last of the smooth brain emperor theories I could find. I hope you are experiencing the same brain rot I am after hearing all those. I don't even want to call the research for this video research since it was more so just finding old forum posts and picking whatever either hurt my head the most or made me laugh the most. These last two are just going to be questions that I have and hopefully someone in the audience could answer this. You see, I don't even know where to start with this one because even in my head, I don't have a concise line of thought, so I'm just going to start blurting it out. So we know of the Red Angel that may or may not have been used in the creation of Sanguinius, or alternatively, is that angel the Sanguinor? In my head, that would make sense, since the Sanguinor acts a lot like a warp entity, and the warp and time mix together like water and oil. There's also the quote-unquote angel that Horus fights in order to get past the memory block placed by the Emperor. Is this the same angel? Is it only described as an angel? Is this instance of an angel just how the Emperor chose to block the memories? Or it's just something that they chose to fit the theme of 40k? My best guess is that all these instances of red angelic creatures is just Sanguinius, and that it's an aspect of his soul returned to the warp with his experiences and humility. But I am happy to be wrong. The whole point of this video is to have questions answered, so please explain away. And this last one isn't even really a question as much as it is just me venting my frustration. Why is Erda even a character? 
Like, if the Emperor just said, yeah, the first step of the Crusade was a baptism by fire, and I just scattered my sons across the stars to mold them into the heroes the Imperium needs, it would make a lot more sense than he just so happens to have a perpetual woman who would make the perfect scapegoat. Because we know for a fact that he had copies of every bit of data on the Primarch project stored away on Luna. Why did he even need her? Why the hell couldn't we have just gotten a situation where Big E owned up to the fact that this was all part of his plan? I'd wager that more Primarchs than not would be able to fully grasp why Big E did this, and would have preferred that honestly, aside from maybe the lion, but his whole stick is keeping secrets, so I wouldn't even be surprised if he knew all of this already. Vulcan, Sanguinius, Lehman Russ, Rogel Dorn, Rebute Gilliman, Corvus Corax, Ferris Manus, Alpharius Omegon, actually they don't count because they probably did know, Perturabo, Horus, hell, even maybe Magnus would have understood. Mortarian, Angron, and Kurz, even if told the truth, probably wouldn't have changed since they kinda got the short end of the stick. I don't know, this last bit wasn't even a question, I just had to get that off my chest. Bye.